Hello friends, welcome to Learner's Planet. This is our very first theory session for the topic electrochemistry. So what is electrochemistry? It is a branch of chemistry which deals with the study of chemical changes which occur on passing electric current into certain chemical systems and also with the generation of electricity by the chemical reactions. See, when electric current is passed into some chemical systems or certain chemical systems, the chemical reactions take place there. And there are systems where the chemical reactions they produce the electric current. Say for example this, this is a, a picture of electrochemical cell. In this case, the redox reactions are taking place and due to the redox reactions, the current is produced. Right? Now, there are systems when electric current is passed into them, the chemical reactions take place. So, what is electrochemistry? It is the branch of chemistry which correlates the electrical energy and chemical reactions which are redox reactions in nature. What do you mean by redox reactions? The reduction and the oxidation reactions taking place together. Say in this case, this is a rust, right? Rust is formed. How? This is also a redox reaction. Iron is forming Fe2 plus ions. It means it is getting oxidized, right? And here hydrogen ion is getting reduced. So this is a redox reaction. So electrochemistry correlates or this topic correlates the electrical energy and the chemical reactions which are redox reactions in nature. So we'll be discussing about electrolysis in this, about the electrochemical cells, about the conductors also. Electrochemistry is the branch of physical chemistry which deals with the relationship between electrical energy and chemical changes taking place in redox reactions or chemical changes which are redox reactions, right? Now these redox reactions, these are taking place where? The containers or vessels where these changes are carried out are called cells. Now there are two types of cells, electrolytic cell and electrochemical cell. In electrolytic cells, when the electric current is passed into the cell, right, there is some uh, electrolyte taken in the electrolytic cell and when the electric current is passed into the cell, the chemical reactions take place. Whereas in electrochemical cell, the redox reactions are being carried out and they produce the electric current. So these are two different types of cells. See, electrolytic cell, in these types of cells, chemical reactions occur on passing electric current and the process is called as electrolysis. Whereas electrochemical cells, the redox reactions that are taking place in the cell generate electricity. Redox reaction, for example, say in a dry cell, there is this zinc ions or zinc zinc plus Cu2 plus ions forming zinc 2 plus ions and copper. In this case zinc is getting oxidized losing two electrons and copper ions are getting reduced. So these redox reactions which are being carried out in the electrochemical cell produce electricity. Right? Thus, in an electrolytic cell, chemical reaction takes place at the cost of electricity, whereas in the electrochemical cell, electricity is generated due to the redox reaction taking place in the cell. So, these are two types of cells. So, before starting our discussion uh, about these cells, let's first discuss about the conductors. See, what are conductors? We, we, you know metals are very good conductors of electricity. But if there is uh, some chemical reaction going on on passing electric current to some solution, say if the solution is copper sulfate, 
if the solution is copper sulfate and a copper rod is dipped in this. And some chemical reaction is going on here on passing electric current. It means that this particular solution that is copper sulfate solution is a good conductor of electricity. So now students, there are two types of conductors. One is a metallic conductor and the others are the electrolytic conductors. That is the solutions which conduct electricity. So we'll basically discuss about the uh, difference between the metallic conductors and the electrolytic conductors. You must be knowing what are conductors. All substances do not conduct electric current. Obviously, wood doesn't conduct electric current. The substances which allow the electric current to flow through them are called conductors. Whereas those which do not permit the flow of electric current are called non-conductors. It's, it's very simple. This definition you might have studied for long. Now conductors are broadly classified into metallic conductors and electrolytic conductors. Metallic conductors means what are the conductors there? They are metals. We know that metals are very good conductors of electricity. Electrolytic conductors means the solution of a salt or acid or a base. Right? That is also the um, good conductor of electricity. Metallic conductors. It means what? Metals. Metals are very good conductors of electricity. Why so? So if I am taking example of um, any metal that is, uh, let's take up sodium here. Why they are good conductors of electricity? Because the loosely held electron in their valence shell, they've got sodium has got a single electron in its valence shell. This electron is loosely held. I can take iron also here. I can take copper here. So the loosely held electron in their valence shell starts moving as soon as the electrical energy is supplied to it. So if I am taking a copper wire, a thin copper wire, as soon as electrical energy will be supplied to it, what will happen? The valence electrons which are present there, they will set into motion. Now this motion of electron leads to the formation, uh, leads to the conduction of current. Right? So why metals are good conductors of electricity? Because the electrons which are loosely held or the valence electrons are loosely held in case of metals and they are set into motion as soon as the electrical energy is supplied. Right? See, in case of uh, sodium, there is only one valence electron. It's loosely held. Potassium also, there is one valence electron. This is a metal. So metals are very good conductors of electricity because the electrons present in the valence shell of their atoms are loosely held by the respective nuclei and on supplying electrical energy, these electrons are set into motion and allow the passage of electric current. So in case of metals, the conductivity is due to the flow of electrons. Now there is one thing to remember students, if we raise the temperature what will happen? Will the conductivity of metal increase or will it decrease? The conductivity of metal will decrease. Why? The conductivity of metal decreases on the rise of temperature. Why is it so? Because on rising the temperature, the positively charged kernels, which is called as the nuclei, the positively charged nuclei in case of the metals is also called as kernels, K-E-R-N-E-L-S, they also start moving, right? Now they start moving under the influence of applied ele electric current and they obstruct the movement of electrons. Thus, the conductivity of metals decreases on increasing temperature. This is a very, very important point and you should remember this.